Good evening. I would like to call the October 9, 2017 Bellbrook City Council meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call. Mr. Edwards? Here. Mr. Greenwood? Here. Mr. McGill? Here. Mrs. Middlestetter? Here. Mrs. Seeger Lawson? Here. Deputy Mayor Schweller? Here. Mayor Baird? Here. <clears throat> Formal approval of City Council work session minutes and regular meeting minutes of September 25th, 2017. Does any <clears throat> member on council have any corrections or addition to the regular City Council meeting minutes of our last meeting? Mm -hmm. No, no. Mayor. Seeing none, the minutes are approved as written. Mayor's announcements. We have one proclamation, and this proclamation is for National Domestic Violence Awareness Month as October 2017. I know there's been a number of fundraisers going on. I know Artemis is having a, a, a big event downtown this month, um, and I think it's, it brings up a very valid point that all the residents should be aware of domestic violence. So I'm going to read this proclamation. National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. October 2017, whereas all citizens of Greene County have a right to live in their homes free from violence or fear of violence. And whereas the problem of domestic violence requires collective community response to ensure safety for victims, accountability for batterers, and safe futures for children. And whereas the reduction of domestic violence in Greene County improves the quality of life for all of our families and individuals. And now, therefore, I, Robert L. Baird, as mayor of the city of Belbrook, in recognition of the <coughs> preservant work done by the Greene County Consortium of Domestic Violence, which consists of more than 85 representatives from the Greene County Law Enforcement, Criminal Justice, Medical Human Services, Victim Adv Advocacy, can't speak this evening, Batterer Intervention, and other groups, do hereby proclaim October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urges all citizens to actively participate in activities sponsored by the Greene County Consortium on the Domestic Violence and Family Violence Prevention Center of Greene County, which encourages all Greene County residents to work toward the elimination of interpersonal violence. So I think it's very important. I know some of the members on council have been involved with this. I don't know if they want to add anything. I um, have my pen on. My purple pen. <laughs> and I know we had a fundraiser for the, uh, what's the uh, women's um, protective? Uh, the Family, family, family Prevention, Prevention Center. Yeah, yeah. Prevention Center. Center. yeah. yeah that was And that was in, a great event. Yeah. When was that? Uh, May. 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 So it's very important. Uh, Green County does do a good job on this. They do have a lot of good services. Um, and I want to thank them also. And it's one of those things that all the police departments of the county and the sheriff's department are involved with. I would like to add that the Family Violence Prevention Center is recognized as one of the best run organizations of its kind in the country. Mm -hmm. They have a, just a, a phenomenal staff that does remarkable work with what they have to work with. And hey. it's it's a very neat facility. Uh, it's mm -hmm. very secure. It's yeah. um, locked up. Uh, yeah. they, they, I think, typically have police there. I know police go in and out there a lot. They work with the police a lot. Um, very much so. So yeah. it's a really neat facility. Um, the only other item I had this evening is I had the opportunity to talk to some third grade classes. I know Mrs. Sargent was one of the teachers. And then all the students, or a lot of the students, sent um, a number of uh, thank yous, uh, and it's uh, they're all very interesting, as you can imagine, from a third grader. Uh, I'm just going to read one or two. Dear Mayor Baird, thank you for coming to our classroom. I have learned a lot from you. I hope you come to our classroom again, and you are a great mayor. So let's see. <laughs> Dear Mayor, I love, let's see, that one's pretty much the same. They always remember a couple things. Um, I learned a lot from you. I think it's funny you have a huge dog and a little dog. I think it is interesting that you do not have an office. <laughs> uh, so they are quite uh, entertaining kids. Um, it is very enjoyable to do. And they always uh, ask the same questions every year. 
when they start running out of questions is always going to be what's your favorite color do you have dogs and what's your favorite food <laughs> so thank you mrs sergeant's class i know they also mark got to come in was it this week they came in last last week, week. Uh, yes and tour the facilities and i'm sure got to meet the police chief and and some and other things the service department and uh, yes so um it's nice to see that you can do that in a small town that's all I have for mayor's announcements. We have no public hearings of ordinances this evening, no introductions of ordinance, ordinances this <coughs> evening. We do have one resolution, Resolution 2017-CC. Mr. Sweller. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 2017-CC, a resolution establishing a blanket purchase order limit as required by Ohio Revised Code, Section 5705.41, parentheses, capital D, parentheses 3. Whereas Ohio Revised Code, 5705.41 parentheses capital D parentheses 3 allows political subdivisions to use blanket purchase orders for the payment of lawfully appropriated goods and services of the subdivision in place of regular purchase orders and whereas only one blanket purchase order may be outstanding per appropriation line item and the amount of the blanket purchase order may not exceed the amount that has been established by a majority of council and whereas the city of Belver currently has not established a maximum amount allowable for blanket purchase orders, whereas city staff recommend a blanket purchase order amount limit not to exceed $25,000 <coughs> unless a purchase for a higher amount has been approved by city council. Now, therefore, the city of Belver hereby resolves that section one, council hereby establishes a blanket purchase order limit not to exceed $25,000 unless a purchase order for a higher amount has been approved by city council in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.41, parentheses, capital D, parentheses 3. Section 2, the city manager slash finance director is hereby authorized, empowered, and directed to take all action necessary to affect such amendment and appropriations and evidence same on the books and financial records of the city. Section 3, this resolution shall take effect and be in force forthwith. And Mark, this is a uh, recommendation that came out of our audit. Yes, uh, although our audit is not uh, completely uh, uh, finalized yet, um, uh, one of the recommendations was to establish a blanket purchase order <coughs> limit. So just to give you a little bit more detail, within the charter, uh, there is a limit that says anything that is less than $50,000 does not have to go out for competitive bid. So if it's greater than $50,000, we have to have a competitive bid. So anything less than $50,000, we're required to issue a purchase order before purchasing it. 90 95 percent of the time that purchase order is very specific we are ordering water meters from badger water meter we're ordering a hundred of them of one inch meters at this size we know exactly what it is that's what we're ordering a blanket purchase order is more for the times when it's like uh, we have blanket purchase order lows that says the service department is doing a project at the museum they don't know what they're going to get into they're not they don't know what they're going to need they can go up to lows and they can buy uh, whatever supplies they need at that time to do it um, but they're still required to get receipts, turn in receipts. We, we, we verify everything that they're purchasing, but they just don't know. It would take too much time for them to go up there with a specific list, get a purchase order approved, then go up to Lowe's and buy it, and then find out that something's not there or whatever. So that's where we, we do that uh, for Lowe's. We do it for advanced auto parts with our vehicle yeah. maintenance for, for a couple different things like that. The auditor, based on this Ohio Revised Code section, has said, Council needs to establish one time the limit. $25,000 is an artificial number. Uh, it was really put in place to satisfy the requirement of the auditor state. We're not going to authorize a blanket purchase order to Lowe's for $25,000, but at some time there may be something we're going to purchase that makes sense to have that. And rather than having to come back to council and amend that, we're going to do this one time, put it in place, and not have to think about it again. It, it's not really going to change anything that we do already. Uh, but it's going to check the box for the auditor's office and uh, uh, remove one thing from our uh, list uh, that they like to create out for us on an annual basis. Any questions on council? Uh, I think um, you're still working on the budget, so it doesn't really authorize any more money to spend. So, I mean, when you read this, you could, there's a lot of questions that come in your mind, like people going to run around writing $25,000, <laughs> but... but you know it's a requirement right they they're, they're still anyone who buys anything with the city is required to have a purchase order all purchase orders are approved by by me before they're they're entered i would not approve a blanket purchase order for to lowe's for 
twenty thousand dollars. It wouldn't happen. Yeah. It, it, if if it's that much of a project, they're going to have mm -hmm. to know exactly what they're trying to get, and it'll be a specific purchase order for that project. Yeah. So it doesn't doesn't modify that, and and everything is controlled by the budget. It says yeah. if you you right. have to have that money appropriated before you can spend it. Yeah, I just want to fully understand that you know mm -hmm. <clears throat> it can be vague. I mean, it depends. So what if it's already it has to be in the budget? What is the purpose of this other than to satisfy an auditor? That, that's the only reason <laughs> that it's there is because we, we have the controls in place already, yeah. uh, but this gotcha. section of the high revised code says that it needed to have council approval. And you're going to see here in a minute, there's a couple other items that are going to be that we've never had actual uh, council approval of that we're going to start having because to put the, in the minutes to put in the minutes that's exactly what it is uh, to, to to have a formal record of uh, that this was this was discussed yeah. so it doesn't none of the things that we're looking at changes anything that we're doing but it will now formalize it yeah if you do have to order a hundred new water meters or whatever and it exceeds this 25 does that mean that you have to come before council and say I want to have a blanket order that would order have, that'd be under a, its own it's, purchase order if it had its own purchase order no if it was a specific if it wasn't a blanket if if it wasn't that said I'm gonna have an open purchase order and I don't know how many water meters I need then I couldn't exceed twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars with that okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't operate that way really the fifty thousand dollars is the limit that says that's when I've got to come back come to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned to Mr. Greenwood before the meeting, there's times that I'll bring items before council that I don't technically have to. The purchase of a police cruiser yeah, is cool. less than fifty thousand dollars, but capital items, things like that, well, I'll bring just because I think it's in the best interest of everyone to be aware of when those purchases are being made. Okay. And there are already line items in the budget. Yes. So, yeah. so yeah. we've already approved the expenditure. Yeah, we've approved so the budget. By so the line item of all the budget. So yeah. yes. our controls are probably a little bit better than what a lot of cities have right now. And the state uses a one size fits all from the standpoint of audit. We're going to talk about two more issues tonight in the same vein. And even the auditors, when you question them, what is the amount? What should it be? We could have made it five hundred thousand dollars. We could have made it a hundred thousand dollars, and the action would be taken. It would come off the list. That's not something we need to worry about. But at least we used something reasonable. Although I don't think we need these controls, but I think we're better controlled. In you know before we even did something like this, as far as it's just they want a purchase order and <coughs> a blanket will cover those ancillary items, whereas everything else is going to be done under a regular purchase order. Yep. Yeah. Right, right. I imagine they they came up with that. Maybe at some point there was a lot of unscrupulous. Spending going on it. Or, there, there or loose records. <laughs> there are examples of places that, uh, uh, that that's why all these laws in came into cities, place. Yeah. In, yeah, right, in other cities <laughs> uh, uh, that uh, have that, but yes, we've never had any experience. And with how that long here. has that section of the Ohio Revised Code been in there the way it is, and we've been audited every year and they never said anything? Uh, uh, probably many years. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. uh, any other questions on City Council? Uh, may I have a motion to adopt Resolution 2017-CC? Well, I'd like to move to the adoption of Resolution 2017-CC. May I have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. And roll call. So this is see what else Okay. Motion by Mr. Schweller to adopt resolution 2017-CC, a resolution establishing a blanket purchase order limit as required by Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.41, parenthesis capital D, parenthesis 3, seconded by Mrs. Seeger Lawson. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mrs. Seeger Lawson? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Moving on, that's all the resolution. <coughs> City Manager's report. Yes, uh, a few items this evening. Uh, first, uh, the Fire Department open house is tomorrow night uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, that is always a great event. They, uh, they put a lot of time and effort in preparing for that. Um, so we'd invite everyone out to uh, Fire Station 2 uh, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock uh, to attend the open house. Um, also, uh, Wednesday, October 18th is our next planning board meeting. Uh, that meeting we will continue the discussion of the comprehensive plan. There's a couple other items of business that uh, will likely be on there too, but uh, Wednesday, October 18th at 6 p.m., uh, the planning board will meet uh, here in council chambers. Uh, the, the levy uh, information meeting, uh, we had a informational meeting last Tuesday evening. Uh, we attendance was uh, was sparse uh, we had uh, uh, mr. Rolf Harper and his wife attended uh, who are helping with the levy committee 
uh, and a gentleman from uh, Channel 7 with his camera was here. So um, uh, I, I guess that's, I'll take that as a good sign that there's not a lot of questions out there. People, it was a beautiful evening that night, so that's probably the other reason. Uh, but we are holding another one uh, this Wednesday afternoon from 3 to 5 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Um, as part of that, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to go through uh, some of the information that uh, uh, I would have presented if anyone had been here. Uh, some of this council has already seen, but again, I'm, I'm just trying to get this information out there. It's Most of it is on our website. Um, there is a, a mailer, uh, informational mailer that's going out to residents uh, starting today, so they'll start getting that uh, in their mailboxes probably this week. Um, so uh, I just want to go through this again with you. So it is a, a three mil additional, this is a general fund levy, uh, three mil five year property tax levy, but it's, we're specifically gonna use it for public safety purposes. Uh, as council knows, the reason that we chose not to uh, have it specific is we both needed for both police and fire. Uh, so by having it as a general fund, that gives us the flexibility and we don't have competing issues on the ballot. It will generate about $500,000 a year. Uh, the one thing everyone within the last week or so has uh, received their notification from the county auditor about what their new value is. So actually, if this is approved, it will be less than three mils because if your value went up, we are only going to generate $500,000. So the values in the community went up 9%. This rate will actually be roughly 9% lower than three mils be already because it's only going to generate what was certified. So even as it, the, the first time you pay your taxes, it's going to be slightly less. It's not enough to, to really make that much of a difference, but it is going to be less. And the thing that I want to make, make clear to everyone, even though people's property taxes went up 9%, our revenue does not go up 9%. Mm -hmm. Our revenue actually stays the same, roughly the same, because the, the property tax rates are actually lowered and the property values go up and we get the same amount of money. So it's very confusing. Very few people completely understand it. In fact, I had to call the county auditor to make sure that I understood what uh, exactly how this was going to work. So, although it'll generate $500,000, <coughs> it'll cost $8.75 per month for each $100,000 in valuation. Probably in reality, it'll be slightly less than that. And when I say slightly, probably pennies less than that per month, but it will be less than that. It won't be more than that uh, to generate that with the new property values. Uh, what are the purposes of the levy? Uh, number one, it's to reduce the, the structural deficit. The, the state has made significant cuts to uh, local government funding over the past uh, seven, eight years uh, to the tune of its affecting us over a quarter of a million dollars per year. If it weren't for those cuts by the state, we would not have a levy on the ballot. We would not have a need for that levy on the ballot, but it is, uh, and that's what it is. The other thing that has an impact uh, with the declining interest rates and the limited investments that the city can invest in, uh, there were, we've, on average, $137,000 less per year uh, in 2017 than what was in 2007. Uh, so that's pretty significant. There were, in I think 2007, we, we earned like $170,000 in interest. And in one of the recent years, it was less than $10,000. So uh, that had a significant impact too, uh, but there's nothing really we can, we can do about that. Um, so on average, our structural deficit averages about $300,000 a year. Well, that's what we're spending more than we're taking in on any given year, and that's what uh, a portion of this levy is needed for. In addition to that, it's, uh, we, we need to add a full-time firefighter. We're having a, a difficult time um, hiring and maintaining part-time fire employees to fill those shifts. Uh, right now, we have one full-time firefighter on each shift uh, with the addition of hiring a new one and shifting some other schedules around, we'll have two full-time firefighters on each shift, still supplemented with part-time, but that will allow us to have those two full-time firefighters on each shift. So the, the cost of, of all that put together uh, is about $130,000 per year. Uh, we'll add one full-time uh, police officer. Uh, primarily this is uh, needed so that we can have a full-time school resource officer. This new officer probably won't be that school resource officer, but it allows somebody from our current staff to become that school resource officer for those nine months out of the year uh, that school is going on. Um, and then in the, in the summer months, they'll be able to offset some, that's our busier time for vacations and things like that. So they can offset some of our overtime that, that we're using now for that. 
uh, the school is also committed to be paying for a portion of the school resource officer. So we're expecting some revenue for that, but uh, the, the estimated cost for that is about $85,000 per year. Uh, and then the, the final uh, purpose is to earmark specific funds for improvements to the downtown. Uh, $25,000 is the number to begin with, depending on other projects going on, that number could increase or decrease, but we wanted to have uh, specific money that we can do uh, sidewalk improvements, streetscape improvements, maybe do some lighting over a period of time, thing, things of that nature to just improve the, the look of downtown. Um, so that, though, that money will also be included uh, if this levy passes. Just some other things to consider uh, uh, with this levy. Uh, Bellbrook does not have a municipal income tax, so if you uh, uh, don't work in another community that has a tax, you're saving anywhere from one and a half to two and a half percent of your income because Bellbrook does not have that. And a lot of people don't understand that if you're paying that to the city of Kettering or the city of Dayton, Bellbrook does not get any of that money back. It does not come to us. There's no revenue sharing or anything like that. That money stays in the community where you're working, uh, not where you're living. So uh, we do not have any benefit from municipal income tax. Uh, our water rates have not been raised since 2011. Um, very proud of that fact that we've been able to maintain that and we haven't needed that money. Um, and so we're not going to ask for it if we don't need it. Uh, and then uh, along those same lines, our waste, waste collection rates have actually been reduced. Uh, there was a period of time that rates were rising. We did, uh, we've now done two separate contracts with a joint contract with other communities. And uh, I was looking at some preliminary projections. We'll be able to keep that $13 per month at least for another three or four years, even though we're actually paying a little bit more to the, for under the current contract, we'll be able to uh, use our existing balance and not have to raise that probably for at least three more years. So uh, we're saving uh, people uh, almost $50 a year uh, from what they had been paying just a few years ago. And I think if you looked at just about any other community around, uh, you're going to pay more than $13 a month for, for trash collection. So uh, that is something that we've done to uh, keep the cost down for our residents. Um, right now our residents pay, uh, for each $100,000, they pay $561 per year to the city for property taxes. I understand their, their property tax bill is higher than that, but that's what we get. That provides our police, our fire, our zoning, property maintenance, uh, our actual street improvements that, that come through, stormwater improvements, uh, the museum, uh, all that. Our rates have not been changed since 2011. Uh, so it's been uh, six plus years since they've been changed. Um, and, uh, and at that point, it was just a replacement levy that changed them. The last time we had a new property tax levy approved was 2009. That was for the fire department in 2009. So uh, it's been over eight years uh, since we've had any new levies approved. And one, one other thing that uh, uh, Councilman took the action uh, several years ago to consolidate our police and fire dispatch uh, with uh, Sugar Creek Township and uh, the city of Xenia and uh, Greene County. Uh, that saves us very conservatively, I'd say $125,000 per year. If we still had that dispatch center today, we'd have to have two full-time employees in there and the technology part of it would be well. So that 125,000 is probably very conservative, but uh, th that's the number we used at the time. That was our estimate at that time. Uh, and I think it's uh, probably more than that, but uh, we, we did do what we could to save some money for the residents. Um, what are we trying to accomplish with this? Uh, we we wanna keep the, our, our safety services, I think are uh, second to none. I think uh, the services we provide by both police and fire the responsiveness we have to residents. Uh, our residents have come to expect it and we want to maintain that. We want to continue to provide that excellent service that we have. Uh, to do that, we need to invest in equipment and personnel. We need to have those people and that equipment available so that when that call comes in, we're able to respond. Um, uh, we just want to maintain the quality of life for the residents. Uh, like I said, they've come to expect it. Uh, we, in some ways, I think we've done a, a, a good job of uh, spoiling them over the years. They, we, we do a lot of things that uh, I, I get comments that the service department, they go above and beyond to, to help somebody with a stormwater issue. And they'll do things that I can guarantee you other cities wouldn't even begin to do uh, if there's an issue to help residents solve their issues. Um, I, I think the 9% the increase in our, in our property values that the city has seen, that's a, that, that works both ways, but I think that's, that's what we're trying to do. That, that is good. People don't like that when they have to pay their taxes, uh, but when they go to sell their house, they certainly like that, and they want to see those property values increase, and they want to see that. And I, I think everyone here has an example of somebody who's sold their house probably for 
uh, at least what they're asking for, if not more, and sold it pretty quickly if uh, if they if they want to do that. Um, and then the downtown area, uh, we did the walkability uh, workshop, and I think we, we saw that there is a lot of interest in the downtown area. And, and just in the last uh, 60 days, there's been a lot of things going on, uh, people making improvements to buildings, and, and, and the city wants to be part of that too and, and do what we can to improve the, the, the look and the appearance of, of downtown Bellbrook. So those are, are the main points uh, that I had. Uh, there is some other information uh, that I've sort of hit on there, but uh, uh, this is a sheet that the council saw back uh, uh, when they made this decision, but it's really in this area here. This is the, the structural deficit that I was talking about that we're spending uh, more than we're taking in uh, just to provide this, the, the level of service that we are. Um, and with, with the levy, uh, we will continue to take in more, but these numbers are considerably lower than they were before, and it, it will stretch it out over a much longer period of time. Um, this, this one provides, we generate right now just over $3 million uh, in property tax revenue, um, and, and this would add an, an additional uh, $500,000 uh, in property tax revenue. Um, and the effective rate is really what uh, this is what these rates here although we have 19.5 mils of voted millage uh, these effective rates are what the residents actually pay and these will continue to go down as the property values go up uh, so we will en end up generating the same amount of money uh, the city the total valuation within the city is about 170 million uh, that was for last year that'll go up by about that eight or nine percent uh, for next year uh, which is a good thing that uh, property values are rising but you can see over, over the course of time, we, we are still uh, going to probably be less than we were uh, back in the peak in 2010 and 11, uh, right when the recession hit, where the property values actually dropped at that point. Uh, and then and finally, um, uh, our portion of the property tax dollar uh, is right now it's about 22%. Obviously, that will go up if this passes. The schools get the majority of that at 55%. Uh, but the county uh, and the health district are at 17% also. So uh, for a $100,000 home, uh, you're going to pay $2,500 in taxes. Uh, only 562 of that goes to the city of Bellbrook. The rest of it goes to the schools, the county, um, uh, different places like that. The libraries, the park district are the other ones that get that money. So um, that is my uh, summary of the levy. Uh, there is that informational meeting on Wednesday if anyone has questions or Feel free to give me a call. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions uh, if they have them. Uh, and then finally, the, the last thing I had for council was uh, our budget schedule. It is that time of year uh, to begin talking about the budget. So uh, prior to our next meeting on October 23rd, we'll have a work session. Uh, at that point, I'm going to change it up from what we've done the last couple years. Um, we're going to have the service department and the admin budget to go before council. Uh, historically, I've had police and fire first didn't make much sense until this levy vote happens to to have it and have a bunch of what ifs if it passes if it if it doesn't pass uh, so on 10 23 we'll have service and admin on November 13th will be the police and fire departments and then on November 27th uh, we'll have the five-year sort of bring it all together with the five-year projection uh, and and some of these sheets that I just showed you here will be uh, summarized in that meeting and at that night uh, will, be, will be when we plan to introduce the appropriations for 2018 so with that I'd be happy to answer any questions any questions on council <coughs> seeing none we'll move on to committee reports service uh, no service report tonight safety I just mentioned what Mark's already mentioned uh, tomorrow night Fire department open house, uh, 6 to 9 p.m. I think the weather's going to be good, and it's always a great uh, thing to attend. You can see uh, what the fire department does and uh, get a taste of what they do, and it's it's amazing. And as we can see, just simple things like, like they teach CP CPR, some of those things have come to light and benefited people. So there's a lot of things that maybe we don't see or know because of their work, uh, people's lives are better and maybe even save their lives. So it's just a great time to go see what they do. All right, thank you very much, Forrest. Um, Mr. Schweller, I think you have a couple things for us this evening. Yeah, we do, Mayor. In everybody's packets uh, this week, we, we actually got the financial update, which is our third quarter analysis. And uh, 
it looks like our revenue is up about 12 percent due primarily to the homestead rollback increase and also we're doing some uh, a lot of tap-in revenue so we're up about 12 percent on the revenue side unfortunately we're, we're also up about six percent on the expenditure side and again i think our biggest change is is the capital and the capital doesn't necessarily hit pro rata so it kind of hits one quarter different than other quarter but again on the capital amounts it's something that we have budgeted and something we track pretty close although it does show up as kind of anomaly as you look at the uh, expenditures uh, month over month the, the tap-in fees have been uh, seventy-five thousand dollars in, in the landings and also eighty-two thousand in white oaks landing so that's been some good revenue for us and a lot of activity and as i understand we've got a number of housing units still on track so we should continue to grow that number a little bit <clears throat> last page is our capital projects and the interesting part about this is when you look through it it looks like there's a lot of things that have been either spent less than the budgeted amount and also there's quite a few things that we continue to defer and i think i speak for the city manager and for our staff that if we have something that doesn't need to be replaced even though it's in the budget for replacement we continue to stretch it out it usefulizes a little bit and as we talk about the the asset management policy later on one of the things the state auditors came in and said that if we're keeping a vehicle for 10 years instead of seven years we should go ahead and make sure we depreciate over the 10 years but it, it just shows that there's been enough of those deferrals that have gone on whereby we extend something beyond its normal useful life that the auditors felt the need to make a comment about but i think that speaks to uh, good stewardship of our assets so we <clears throat> that it might come yeah i will add any other comments anybody wants to make on any questions uh, mark and i can certainly respond mm -hmm. do we need to make a motion to acknowledge <laughs> yeah uh, they, they want us to have it yeah we, okay. we need to have a formal acknowledgement of the quarterly financials in the minutes and this is again another one of the one size fits all even though we talk about this every meeting it's not documented formally in our in our minutes as far as by a motion to accept so i guess at the end i would move that we would accept the uh third quarter unaudited financial report for 2017. may i have a second that i'll second and roll call motion by mr schweller to accept the third quarter 2017 unaudited financial report seconded by mr edwards mr schweller yes mr edwards yes mr greenwood yes mr mcgill yes mrs middlestetter yes mrs Seeger lawson yes mayor baird yes the second item after tonight mayor is the asset management policy and again this is something that came out in the audit conversation i don't think it's something that's tremendously relevant to us but the auditors brought it up and again it's along the uh, the one size fits all agenda but it basically is made up of two parts one is capital assets and the other is controlled capital type assets and for our capital assets what we've done is we've elected a threshold of five thousand dollars such that if something costs less than five thousand dollars it's not going to be capitalized and then mark has also established useful lives based on estimates and it ranges from probably a low of five years to vehicles machinery equipment and high of 75 years to utility structures and service and buildings and improvements and again this is along the lines that the auditor mentioned that if we have assets that last longer than the projected useful life we should use a different useful life on the asset as we go forward capitalizing which i don't really agree with that's what the state wants to see us be doing and again a lot of times we have something that stretches out beyond its useful life it's because we've been able to extend its service or maybe modify it or make some minor repairs to it so i think that's just safeguarding assets and doing the right thing the second part of the the uh, asset management policy is controlled capital type assets and this just says the custodial department shall maintain inventory records for assets that have initial useful lives extending beyond one year and a cost greater than five hundred dollars and generally we're going to tag the assets and have them identified by number we'll keep a database of all the assets and again this is things with the useful life greater than one year so that it's not really just a consumable supply and also something with a cost greater than five hundred dollars i think we have a lot of this already in place i don't think this is going to require a tremendous amount of work by staff but again they wanted us to to adopt a, a asset management policy and have something in writing and, anything else mark no uh, and actually this policy with the exception of the inclusion of the useful lives <laughs> was um a, originally right. drafted in 2014 and it was in put in place by staff they want council to approve it so that's why it's going in place now it, it so nothing has changed the useful lives are exactly what shows up in our financial statements everything else on this uh, policy has been in place since 2014 
nothing has changed. We've been doing these lists of uh, the control type assets. We've been capitalizing. We've done all that. So okay. this, again, is just for the record. It'll be adopted, and we can forward it to the auditors. Mr. Weller, would you like to make a motion? I'd like to, to move that we adopt the asset management policy as submitted and read in um, part tonight. May I have a second? Second. And roll call. Motion by Mr. Schweller to adopt the asset manage the asset management policy. Um, seconded by Mr. McGill. Mr. Schweller. Yes. Mr. McGill. Yes. Mr. Edwards. Yes. Mr. Greenwood. Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter. Yes. Mrs. Seeger Lawson. Yes. Mayor Baird. Yes. Anything else? That's all for tonight. All right. Community affairs. Uh, only to remind people, Halloween in the park is coming up. I believe it's October twenty-first. Yes. Uh, three to five. I believe that's correct. So. I guess we should reiterate while we're on the topic that Halloween is October thirty-first. Before we repeat that next yes. meeting. Yes. I know we got a couple another meeting. So. Yep. Anything else? That's that it. it. That's it. Uh, any old business to come before council? Any new business? Open discussion. Nothing Nick? tonight, Mayor. Or uh, <clears throat> on down the road. Uh, I was just going to uh, report that uh, I attended the Green County Regional Planning Meeting on September 26th. Um, and there were a few things that were talked about. Um, one of them is uh, Green County is going to try to do a coordination of a GIS system. And so they're going to invite us and other communities in Green County to use the same system. Um, GIS system, I can't remember what it stands for. Geospatial Ge something. Geographic information Ge system. Ge information system. Um, so that we can track things and be able to coordinate things with Green County. So they're going to reach out to us when they try to have that meeting. I'm not sure when it is yet. Uh, they didn't know it at that time when it was going to be. And done. we're in the process of putting our own in place right now because it's that you know we, we we're doing that we'll we'll coordinate with them we get a lot of data from them already okay. but we're putting one in place for our water primarily for the water system, water. Uh, water system. Okay. but then also for streets and stormwater things of that nature too okay um, they also invited uh, all members of council to a meeting on October 17th at 6 p.m. and I think that was shared among the council members and that's for um, uh, what's called the thoroughfare project to try and help make sure that we are all planning and coordinating our thoroughfares um, throughout the community throughout the uh, county um, and the other thing that came up was there was a discussion about the flooding in Houston and what would happen and sp they specifically were tar targeting Bellbrook just because I think probably of our location and where we are in relation to the rivers and streams and things like that um, but the question came up about you know what would happen if there was a a major storm like there was in Houston and Bellbrook and do we have an emergency evacuation plan and um, have we thought of where like the um, uh, where the shelters would be and things like that and I thought we probably have I just wasn't sure if we if we've talked about it or maybe if if we can like put it on paper just and it is on paper okay. not necessarily specific for Bellbrook for for Green County the Green County EMA that's really what they do and that's what we were a member of that and that's what we pay for them they have a, an emergency manager uh, that that's what her her sole focus is to develop the plans for the county and there are all kinds of things that list the places that people can shelter obviously the a, a flood is something that is is maybe more prominent here but tornadoes is what's always been the the driver so what happens if places are destroyed and and they need to shelter so you know is it the high schools is it what you know depending on the path or where is flooded where can where where can they go okay. um, so yes there is a plan there's in place a, okay. uh, just maybe I mean you don't have to by next time or something but if you could maybe share it with us just so we have an idea about kind of what what the plan is I mean what, are there certain places in Bellbrook where we would tell people to go to or I, I was just thinking you know okay I'm, I live up on the hill so I'm not too worried about you know floods but if I if I was where would I go um, it's, and, and so much of it is incident specific yeah. Yeah. Uh, if it's a flood that and even with with the hurricane there they had a fair amount of time to they didn't know where but they knew to get people to evacuate in that way where, whereas a tornado no warning no anything so it's completely it's different right. and where it's going to be and what you're going to have access to and okay. and you can't rely on it so um, 
I would say with the exception of obviously the downtown area is in the floodplain uh, mm -hmm. or very close to it, that would probably be the most susceptible place and then getting people to uh, whether it's the high school or the middle school or, pl or places that are, are on uh, higher ground. Uh, but with the amount of rain that they got, it didn't really matter if you were on uh, how higher ground you were on. There, there was just there was a lot of water. So, um, so some of it's contingent, but I can I can get some of that information and uh, okay, uh, just, it, at least helpful. in a general per, yeah. in a general way what uh, what the plan is. Yeah. Okay. I went uh, <clears throat> when I was over Green County Courthouse. They got it down the bottom courthouse. They got a situation room. Yes. With everything in place and people, in case there's emergencies, it's it's a pretty good setup. And all that stuff's planned and should be in place, but for specific for here, I'm not sure. Yeah, I just thought it'd be helpful that, for be all of us to kind of have an idea about mm -hmm. okay, where's the first designated place where we're supposed to send people. Right. Okay. And and yes, the the EMA is down at the bottom of the courthouse, yeah. and they have a situation room, and and there's actually an advisory board that I serve on that yeah. we meet on a quarterly basis and talk about the the needs of the EMA and. Uh, they do a lot of the grant, they do a lot of the uh, tabletop exercises where they, they plan for these things, that type of thing. So that's, uh, uh, we are involved in that uh, as much as we can be. And that's one of the things that some of the groups uh, bring up, the fact that they, they call them rain bombs that just inundate a, maybe a small area or a big area with, you know, unprecedented amounts of rain in a short period of time. And you know we're susceptible to that anywhere, and uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, hopefully the weatherman would tell us beforehand. <laughs> I know in in Cincinnati just a couple of years ago they had yeah. one of those that I mean it flooded the streets just in a very yeah. relatively small area, but it completely inundated them, and then you know it, it went away almost as quickly as it yeah. came. But for that period of time, it was it was pretty intense. I think infrastructure-wise, our water plant, I mean. It's possible because the levee's back there. If it was something extreme, I guess it could knock it out. I don't know if there's a contingency to shut some valves and bring water from somewhere else if it was that bad. We have access. We have crossover points with Green right. County. That's uh, what I thought. So that if, if, uh, if we needed to, we can share water with them. And, in fact, one of them, even though it's with Green County, it's actually from the Montgomery County system. Uh, over in the area of Clio Road, that we yeah. can we can get water from from them too in a in a uh, very unique situation like that. Uh, so because working with you know we've got the maps and the water mains and it's all tied together. Right. So there's a way of and, it, and it's something like that that water plant would probably be up pretty quick anyway. Yeah. You know. So that was the only thing. That, this building here it might get your generator maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Um, the only other thing that I was going to ask about was, um, you know, we did the banners that have the Bel you know, city of Belberg on them, but it, it's, it's almost Christmas time and things like that. When I know we were talked about doing, doing like seasonal banners, and I just was wondering what. Last year we did the snowflakes. Yeah. Oh, the snowflakes. We still uh, so we did those, and we still have those. I think we've added a couple more locations than we did, so I'll, we'll, we'll check the status of those. Okay. Uh, but there's no, like, Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving? No, or no, we, we really... Uh, uh, tried to, to limit it. Um, we had the bicentennial ones, uh, obviously, and then we went to the snowflakes, and then we now just the, the city of Bellbrook logos, and we can have as many, just a question of cost. Right. Uh, they, they've see. actually held up fairly well, uh -huh. uh, better than, you know, sometimes those things with the wind and that can get torn up, uh, but uh, they've, they've held up very well, so we'll probably continue to use that cycle of them until they, they wear out, and then we'll look at what the other options are. Okay. Mr. Fowler. Just want to reiter reiterate what the city manager talked about with regards to levy. It's a very significant uh, amount of money for the city. It's something that's extremely necessary. We certainly ask your support. By all means, if you have questions, contact the city, contact city council, or at least attend the meeting Wednesday from 3 o'clock in city council chambers. Yes. Thanks. All right. Um, I do not have anything this evening. Does anyone in our audience have anything this evening? No. Thank you very much, Mrs. Herzog. Uh, Louie, seeing no one else, I call this meeting adjourned.